The man from the oldest city in the world, one. I am hurrying to the pen benefit. I am to read there, something from Neruda. His letter to another writer, Miguel Altero Silvia in Caracas. It is a letter, a poem about his choices for poetry, about finding poetry not occupied exclusively with metaphysical subjects. Life is like the sky, Miguel. When we put loving and fighting in it, words that are bread and wine. I swing into the parking lot at King and John Street. The evening is glistening after a shower of rain. Car lights reflect off the wet streets. A slight thin drizzle is still falling. There, near the Sky Dome, near the theatres, there glitters the great building of the CBC from which the national culture emanates across the country, incessant, repetitive European classical music, deranciated jazz tucked away at night, waxy talk so careful, so nervous. Across the street is the theater where the benefit will be held. I'm going to a room, a theater full of writers, writers like me and, and not like me. Shining escalators, velvet drapes and soft carpeting will greet me. I see all myself in the cylinder of black pants, black jacket, green shawl. I'm thinking of Neruda and this letter to a friend. Each time I walk through these kinds of halls, I must summon the writers I feed on and in whom I find comradeship. Today, today it is Neruda. I took life and I faced her and kissed her and then went through the tunnels of the mines to see how other men live. And when I came out, my hands stained with garbage and sadness. I held my hands up and showed them to the generals and said, I am not a part of this crime. I had brought joy over to my side. It is 50 years after Neruda wrote this letter and I clasp it when I lose my way because it is as if he has written it to me. It is my faith that Neruda can write a poem 50 years ago and I can feel its company now. Too. There is a city here where I walk to see how others live. I could, I suppose, see about myself only. I could be unaffected. I could come to the easy belief that really, what is there to speak against? I could develop that voice so full of cold address to beauty. I could with some self-defacement go about the business of making my living. I could say in that way that many do, oh, it's not so bad. Your writing need not show your skin. It need not speak of trouble. History is a burden after all. But Neruda summons me, is waiting for me at the end of every sentence. I cannot ignore my hands stained with garbage and sadness. Three. What holds poetry together in this city, what holds me together, is the knowledge that I cannot resist seeing. What holds me is the real look of things. If I see someone, I see the ghost of them, the air around them and where they've been. If I see the city, I see its living ghostliness, the stray looks, the dying hands. If I see its needs and its discomforts locked in apartments, it's time that no one has. The growing citizenry of homelessness, the man sitting on the corner of Bathurst and college panhandling saying, have a nice day, have a nice day to anyone and everyone. The woman who used to be a girl when I was a girl and she French from the Quebec city now bloated on bad food and sleeping variously at Spadinia and Bloor at college and Spadinia. I remember her as a flower child wearing a thin Indian cotton dress, her hair on her narrow shoulders. She is still upbeat as then, bubbly but sometimes disorientated. The man who walks back and forth pacing the pavement on Shooter Street near the park as if he is waiting for someone, or the woman pacing and preaching at St. Clair and Oakwood in a language misunderstood as broken, but sustaining its own logic of, imp of imprecations. There are people on the edges of the city, some would say, not emblematic. I know they might be the edges and easily ignored, but they curl into the middle, the middle of the city, 
where what looks like an ordinary life is composed of what is beaten into or calculated and chalked up to the world. What is accepted with a shrug, but it rodes the soul, burns it like so much acid. We'll go around again, they say. We admit, we confess to not being fit for your world, the exhaustion of it. Four. I have crumpled Neruda in my hand to visit this room because I think it is difficult to see here in this city. No one wants to see or seeing is a charity they submit to. Everything far away is visible. Everything close is viewed with distrust or disbelief, is viewed as imaginary. Have you ever spent a whole day close to seabirds watching how they fly? They seem to be carrying the letters of the world to their destinations. <laughs>